see you lost inside your circumstance and I see you looking for a chance to dance and it seems to me the world's a better place because of you you were made to shine just like the stars above and I know you are made for love and to be loved and it seems to me the world's a better place because of you oh why do we see one another and compare our lives together thinking that the greener grass is anywhere but here shine shine set your eyes on things above now shine shine Someone made for love now Shine, shine Join in the applause of love and shine Ain't it grand Life is so worth celebrating Hand in hand Live a life worth imitating Sing along better place because of you oh why do we see one well, I'm the free world leader freedom's rolling out to you oh let's roll well I'm the good news instigator everybody and welcome to the John Morgan Show. I appreciate y'all being here so, so much on a Wonder Wednesday. A wondrous, wondrous, wonderful day. Hi, D. Hi, Beth. Hi, Karen Shubele Vance. I appreciate you guys all being here. What makes today wonderful for you? Any thoughts? Any anybody like to plug in something wonderful that happened to you today? Something wonderful, wondrous, or wonder inspiring? To talk about wonder today. that dress. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning in to the John Morgan Show. I am honored to be with you today. My name is John Morgan, and I'm your host on this journey called, I don't know, the John Morgan Show, the journey into excellence journey into becoming more Christ-like. That's what I'd like to see happen over the years and days that we have the privilege of journeying together. And uh, I've, I've got a question for you today. Today's show is called Too Heavenly Minded? With a question mark at the end? You know, you've met those people. They're, all they do is they talk about one day they're going to be in heaven and they they just, you know, they, it's like they flit around like a, like a mime that doesn't even make any difference in the world. I mean, it's just like, you know, and, and it, they just remind you of that, that sentence that says, they're too heavenly minded to be any earthly good or too heavenly minded to be any earthly good. I, I, I don't know exactly how the phrase goes, but, but surely you've, we've all met those people, haven't you? Haven't you? <laughs> I haven't either. <laughs> I've, I've heard that phrase. He's 
so heavenly, that's it, that's the phrase. He's so heavenly minded that he's no earthly good. I have never met anyone like that. The people that I know that are heavenly minded are busy. They're doing stuff for the kingdom. They're they're out there changing lives and winning hearts to Christ because they're so excited about heaven that they want to take everybody with them. So I I just I I don't know about this too heavenly minded business. I I really think it's not a I don't think it's a biblical that he's so heavenly minded that he's no earthly good. I don't know. The th- you know, think about this. Okay. When we work, why when we work, we get a job, what's the one of the main things that we want to make sure of before we accept the position? And this is like 100% of everybody that has a job. We want to know what the dinero, right? We want to know what's what's in it for me. That's the big question on everybody's mind every day, all the time. What's in it for me? And you know what? Friends, God made us that way. We were created by our infinite loving creator with a reward mentality. And I I know folks that that try to deny that. They try to say, oh, I I, I just want to do what I can for, you know, no personal gain. Well, they say it brings a good feeling. Well, guess what that good feeling is? A reward. (laughs) That's right. Anyway, what do we do with our money? What does the money bring us that we work so hard for every day? A good feeling. Happiness, joy, being out of debt. It's all reward-based. Everything is reward-based. Everything is. And God made us that way. He wants us to be filled with uh, an earnest desire for reward because he made us that way. We can deny it. We can pretend it's not true, but it's, it's true. It's just true. We were created with a reward motivation. And we, we all have it. I mean, every conversation that you have, every act that you do, it, it is, it is goal-oriented. You, you're trying to get something. Okay? That's all of us. That's just, that's, that's life, right? Who agrees with me? Give me a thumbs up, a heart, whatever. Uh, what did you say, Derek D? I'm going to put you up here on the thing because it makes the words a little bigger, and I will be able to read them. All right, D, that there is a fridge in the break room for lunches. Huh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think what you're saying is that that that's a refrigerator magnet. Is that what you're saying, D? That yeah. 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 We're we're motivated by a desire to receive a good feeling and of course the good of others is in and of itself a reward because we love others. We want their good. We want them to be with us. We want to serve others out of a love for God and uh, and a desire to please him. But is not pleasing the Lord also a reward? Think about it. Think about it. The ultimate reward is Christ. I mean, even Disney rewards us. You go to Disney and You have to stand in a long line, and at the end of the long line, what? It's a reward. You get to go on the ride. You get to see the show. And they they have a a, a pre-show, you know, a a, a mini show that that you have to kind of suffer through, the black and white, if you will, in order to go into the ultimate experience of the the main presentation, which is the ultimate reward. So why? So what? On a wonderful Wednesday, I would like to share with one another what it is that you consider a great reward in your life, um, and and just you know little thoughts. If you would just just fill in some some ideas, to me a, a date night with my beautiful bride is a tremendous reward. I love being with Kathy. I love 
her. I love going anywhere with her. I love staying home with her. I love watching. We're into this new series right now called Poldark. It's uh, it's really fun. I it's from like the eighteen somethings and um, and it's it draws you in. I mean, the very first episode draws you right in. It's clean, family friendly. And so far, anyway, we, we've watched four episodes, and we really, Kathy and I are really enjoying it. Poldark, it's on Amazon Prime. Watching it is a reward. It's satisfying. It's pleasing to see what happens to the people in, in, the, uh, in the episodes. Oh, you were just joking, D. Okay. Well, don't feel bad. It's good. Yeah, that's what we expect when we get hired. Right. Monetary reward. And it just reminds me of the, of the scripture that I shared the other day that God, in, in order to believe in God, you got to believe two things. Number one, that he exists. And number two, that he is a rewarder. He is a rewarder of what? He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And I wanted to share with you today something that happened to me this morning when I woke up. I woke up at uh, around seven. My, I had my alarm set. The, it went off. And I hit the snooze one time and laid in bed thinking. And as I was laying there pondering, I felt like the Holy Spirit spoke to me. And this is what I believe he said. And I've shared it with a few people. He said, I want you to focus on heaven. Hi, Norm. Welcome to the show. I want you to focus on things above, not on things that are below. And I've been thinking about that all day, so I wanted to just share it with you. Okay, what, are, what is above? What is waiting for us above? Well, no sorrow, no suffering, no death, no dying, no, no sickness, just awesome adventure. And the ultimate reward is Christ himself, who we have already been joined to by virtue of the fact of being born again. That's what happened. It's like um, a, a, a caterpillar goes into a cocoon. And when he comes out, he's a new creation. And the Bible says that old things have passed away. And behold, all things have become new. We're a new creation. We're joined with Christ, never to be unjoined. And one day, there will be an ultimate reward to everything we experience, everything we suffer, everything we go through on this earth, and that is to be rewarded with eternal life in heaven. And it's just awesome. I want to share a scripture with you out of the book in the New Testament of Colossians, okay? And this backs up what I felt like the Spirit spoke to me, the Holy Spirit spoke to me this morning. Okay, it's out of Colossians, and you guys write, jot this down, Colossians chapter 3. And honestly, the whole chapter is crazy amazing, crazy amazing. You'll learn so much just from reading that chapter, Colossians chapter 3. But here's the first four verses, and I uh, hope you enjoy it. Hi, Angela. Welcome to the show. It's so nice to see you. Um, okay. So this, we're talking about reward. We're talking about where we're going, what's at the end of all this, and, and, and how God wants us to, to live our lives as we journey on our way there. We're on a journey to heaven. So how does God want us to conduct our lives as we journey? So here we go. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. And, and the Bible says that as he was raised from the dead, we, because we're in him, we experience that same resurrection, okay? Our old life has been, we've died. We, we died with him on the cross, and it's more than symbolic because the old person that we were is put away with, the one that, the one that just craves sin and, and rebellion. And that, that person has actually died. It's, uh, it's more than metaphorical. Something really happened. A, a transaction happened. And, um, and then we were raised with him. It says, since then you have been raised with Christ. And here's the directive. Set your hearts on things above 
where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds, so, so set your hearts and set your minds. Think and feel. Um, set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. That's crazy. Colossians 1 through 4, and that's in the New International Version of the Bible. Um, and I want to share with you what it says in the version that I have been reading lately. I love it. The New Living Translation. It says this. S- same, same verses. Just a different kind of way of looking at the same verses. Since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. For you died to this life, and your real life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, then you will share in all his glory. And then in the ESV, it says, set your mind on things, set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. And then um, one more version, the Amplified Bible says, no, no, this is the, uh, the Passion the Translation. It says, yes, feast on all the treasures, treasures, rewards. Feast on all the treasures of the heavenly realm and fill your thoughts with heavenly realities and not the distractions of the natural realm. Now, this is going to get practical. I'm going to share with you some some real practical application to this in just a second. Your crucifixion with Christ has severed the tie to this life, and now your true life is hidden away in God, in Christ. And as Christ himself is seen for who he really is, you are. Who really, who you really are, will also be revealed, for you are now one with Him, in His glory. We are now one with Him. You know the Bible talks about God lives in us, and you know it's it's such a mystery. We hardly ever ponder what that actually means, that God lives in me. But it's just mind-bogglingly huge, bogglingly, bogglingly. I say that five times, Christopher Sean Shaw. <laughs> oh, thanks for the shout out on your show, by the way, last night. I appreciate that. Uh, it's mind bogglingly huge to think that Christ has now joined himself with us and become one with us. It's just, it's just, whoa. And so here's the practical application in why I believe God spoke to me this morning to, to, to remember as by way of reminder, to focus on on Christ and on the realities of heaven and not so much on the things that are here because I've been getting bogged down by politics. I've been looking at all these messenger little things that come along that people send me, and honestly, they've been weighing me down. They've been making me think too much about what's going on here And what that does is it takes me out of my place of peace. It takes me out of my place of joy and out of my place of rest. I wind up saying stupid things to people and just, you know, it gets my motivation in a wrong place. And so I repented this morning. I said, God, forgive me for focusing too much on the realities of this world and this realm because the realities of heaven are so much greater. And anyway, it is from there that I receive my joy. It is from there that I receive my peace. It is from Christ that I live. It's where I get all the goods. Yes, of course, politics is important. Yes, of course, we have to decide who we're going to vote for. Yes, we have to study and check out the principles of it all. But be careful what you let permeate your heart. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, we have to do out, do work in this world. And as we focus on the realities of heaven, we're going to love God and we're going to love others. And so we're going to do and give and be as Christ would have us to do, to sacrifice for the good of others, to lay down our lives in love for our brothers and sisters, to write songs that speak of, of heavenly realities, write songs that speak of loving others and doing for others. 
And so that's my wonderful, wondrous Wednesday message, that we would all take stock of what we focus on. And if we're focusing on too much, worrying who's going to win this and that, hey, there's another scripture that says, don't worry about anything. This is in Matthew chapter 6. It says, don't worry about anything. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, and everything we need will be added to us. He's our provider. He's our healer. He's our hope. He's our savior. He's everything. And uh, you might, at the end of this go show, go, that John Morgan, he's definitely a guy that's so heavenly minded that he's no earthly good. Beg to differ. Beg to differ. Because being heavenly minded will make you earthly good because it'll give you the motivation to love, to cherish others, to give yourself away, to give your money away, to work hard, to earn money, to serve others. All of the motivation for living a valuable and cherished life comes from focusing on reward. So, what are you living for, my friends? Time to take a second look. I love you. I like you. I appreciate you. And I can't wait to do this again tomorrow on... I got to think of a word to go with Thursday. <laughs> love you guys. Have a great dinner. See you tomorrow. Hey, this is Al Robertson from Duck Dynasty and Duck Commander. I want to tell you about a great book called War on Fear from my good buddy, John Morgan. Of course, he looks like George W. Bush, who had the famous War on Terror, so I immediately knew, you know, there was a nice uh, a bit of wordplay there. This book is fantastic. I think it speaks to sort of that natural fear that all of us have, whether it's public speaking or whether it's the first time you get asked to do something you've never done before, uh, up to, you know, the fear of, of loss of life, of, of a sick uh, person in your family, all the things that, that we face every single day. I recommend this highly. I promise you will be blessed when you read this book. And it's the sort of book that after you read it, you're going to want to pass that on to someone else, which to me are the best kind of books. So War on Fear, get yours as soon as you can. Thanks again for tuning in today, folks. Oh, let's roll. I appreciate you. Well, I'm the good news instigator, compassionate conversator. This freedom is rocking and rolling on after you. White and blue. Amigos.